Hi, I'm here to talk about this gorgeous book. Isn't it, that cover gorgeous? The uh, the sleeve, Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. If you um, remember when I was talking about my plans for 2022, I said that I was going to predominantly read books that I'd chosen myself. Um, at the moment, uh, I'm reading books that I was given for Christmas. And this was one of them because uh, my family know I like Greek myth retellings. Ariadne is somebody that I know of as being the person who helped Theseus defeat the Minotaur, but I knew nothing else about her. My bad, I suppose. I, I should know these things, but I didn't. And her sister Phaedra, I knew even less about. So it was interesting to pick this up this book up to find out more about these two women. Um, on the back it says, in a world ruled by temperamental petulant gods, Ariadne is a shining beacon of female strength and courage, making this a story that's impossible to forget. All right, so the first third of the book is the story we all know, the story of the Minotaur and how Ariadne helps Theseus to defeat him. But we also get the story of her mother Pacify and how the Minotaur came into being and the effect of his birth upon the family, upon the island and upon her father. Um, again, as it said here, Pacify, she was punished by the gods for um, to, to have the Minotaur. So she was a woman who was used by the gods. And this is a theme that carries on through the, the book. Ariadne and Phaedra, they are very strong characters, but they are still in a male world. The gods still rule and the kings still rule they are women that they may be strong they may be independent but they are still left to look after the home while the husbands go off and kill monsters or whatever it is that the heroes do the heroes in the book do not come out well they are not nice characters on the whole there are secrets. They they don't treat their wives. Oh, I'm going to counter that a little bit. Theseus comes out worse than Dionysius, the husband of Ariadne. Dionysius, he does seem a very loving husband and father, whereas Theseus... Now, he's not someone you'd want to know for all his hero bits. He's not somebody you want to know. But at the end of it, these women do not have live their own lives in a way. They are still, uh, not puppets, but they are still controlled. So it's not, to me, it's not quite the feminist retelling that I was expecting it to be. You have the points of view of Ariadne, you have the point of view of Phaedra, which surprised me a bit because, <clears throat> sorry, I thought this was a book about Ariadne. Um, I wasn't expecting Phaedra to have her own point of view throughout the book, but it does add another layer. On the whole, it was a, a good read and there's some beautiful lyrical passages in here. But I didn't engage with the characters. I was hoping that I would feel Ariadne's and Phaedra's emotions. I would I would get under their skin, but but I didn't. It was it did feel like a retelling of a story, and I to me I didn't get the emotion, and that was what I was hoping for. So it is a good read. There's some beautiful writing in here, and you do get to see the gods. And you hear stories that I didn't know because I only knew the basic story of Theseus and the Minotaur. 
and Dabby and me. So, yes, I've got Electra, her next book, on Kindle to um, to, to read at some point because that was sent to me by, by NetGalley. It was one I requested from NetGalley. So I'll be interested to see that one because, again, Electra is not somebody that I really know an awful lot about. But it's a Greek retelling, so I always love Greek retellings. So, Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. It wasn't a five star, but we're sort of, sort of close. And I will catch you next time. So happy reading. Take care. Bye. Thank you.